All right, we are live. Welcome in, my friends, to uh, another training class here in the uh, Sweet Profits, the the food truck, uh, food shop marketing group. I'm Scott Morrison. Scott Morrison, I'm the host of the group. Can't talk already. Uh, welcome on in, though. Happy to have you here today. Uh, wherever it's the morning, the afternoon, whatever it is, good day to you. And uh, really excited to dive into today's topic. We're going to talk about shaved ice business fundamentals. Now, I've done this class a couple of times. This will be a little bit different. I have some new content I put in here as well. Um, but really want to help you walk through, uh, specifically if you own or think about opening a shaved ice business, this is some information specific on how to do that. Uh, we get in the, the meat of it too and give you some specific actionable things to do as well. Um, if you don't have a shaved ice business, you have another type of food truck or food shop, still pay attention. A lot of what we talk about today will apply to you. It's not just shaved ice specific, although uh, it may work best for that type of business, but a lot of what we'll go through today will help you regardless of the niche and the product and the, the cuisine that you serve. So stick around for that. So um, I like to do these with this little uh, PowerPoint here rather than their little uh, slideshow here. Sorry, little bullet points rather than a whole PowerPoint. Um, so let's walk through this and we'll go through some different things that will help you guys with your shaved ice business. So um, as we get started here, uh, put in the comments, whether you're watching this live or you're watching the on the replay, uh, put in the comments. Let me know what type of business you have and how long you've been doing it for. Uh, if you also want to comment, uh, if this is the first of the classes you've heard of mine, if you've heard many, uh, let me know there as well. I uh, would love to hear what you have to say there. By way of housekeeping, if you have questions, if you have comments, please be active in here. Uh, I'll get to as many questions as I can. Again, if you're watching this on the replay, not as I'm doing it live, um, I'll go through and as I see many of those comments, I'll an answer it as many as I can. Or you can feel free to direct message me. A lot of you do that. You ask me questions about your specific situation. Feel free to do that. I'll be happy to help you and answer there for you. Um, and if you if you are doing it live, uh, click on that link real quick, streamyard.com slash Facebook. That's the app I'm using for this that allow me to be able to see your name and see who's commenting rather than just some random anonymous person that'll be listed here. So who I am is, again, I'm, my name is Scott Morrison. This is a picture of me many years back I, when I created my, or I made my first cup of shaved ice. I think it did pretty good for my first one. I had no experience doing it when I started this uh, business. I'll tell you a little bit about that story. Um, it, it's been, I don't know, it's been a good journey. It's been a lot of fun. Um, prior to the shaved ice and the food truck world that I've done here for uh, well over 15 years, can go on 20 years now almost, uh, I've supported and worked with small businesses and entrepreneurs. Uh, I've owned my own businesses. I've always been around the world of, of an entrepreneur, somebody who is crazy enough to say, you know what, I'm going to try to forge my own path. I'm going to do my own thing. I have this idea. I have this thing. I want to go and pursue it for whatever reason that you have for it. Um, I've always been around that. I specialize in the business development uh, processes and systems. So specifically, how to market, how to sell, how to develop processes so your thing can be fulfilled. That's always been my specialty and, and the things that I love doing. Presently today, I run a, a shaved ice business called Snowmos. I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in a second because we're going to use Snowmos as an example for a lot we'll talk about today. Uh, and I created this group um, that really I started calling by Sweet Profits. But what this group is for and what this is all about is really to help you, uh, the business owner, to be able to, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, help you really uh, have a place where you can go to for community uh, around the training resources, courses, and direction about uh, about shaved ice businesses, uh, food trucks, and specifically around the marketing aspects of it. So I'm not the best as far as you know what uh, equipment you need to buy if you're going to open up a hot dog stand. Uh, I can't help you as much there, but I can definitely help you uh, figure out well, what processes you need to make sure it works. How do you market the business well, and how do you sell so you make more uh, make money? That's really what I've always been about. That's what this course is. I'm sorry. This what this class is about. Um, that's what uh, the the group is about. Um, that's what all the things we're doing is about. That is to help you get more business for your specific uh, business, your specific situation. Um, feel free uh, if you have a topic or something you want to learn about. Uh, DM me or ask me about it. We'd be happy to do more classes for you. And also be active in the group. You'll get as much as you give in the group. So go in there, uh, leave comments, uh, ask questions. Uh, be very active in that group so you can help get the most out of being a part of that group. Um, from there, as I did show you already, the main reason why I do everything is this, my crew. This is my wife and I. We have five kids, um, ages from 19 all the way down to nine. Um, they have all worked in our business um, in one way, shape, or form. We, you know, not slave labor too. We actually pay them. Uh, but they've all worked in Snowmos, our shaved ice business. Um, all very active in different things. But they're my reason for everything that I do here is my crew uh, to not only support them, but uh, you know, do my best uh, for dad here to make them proud for what I'm working on them. What Snowmos is, and again, I, I share this a little bit just as a backstory. You can, can understand my, my point of view, where we're coming from, and understand some of my experience and why I think I have some things that uh, can really help you if you're really uh, looking to open or grow and run your, your business here. Uh, but Snowmos is our shaved ice business. Today, what it looks like is this. It's a food trailer. Um, it's parked in a location. Uh, we're in Orlando, Florida, in Central Florida. Um, this is in a suburb called Claremont. It's just outside of Orlando, and it stays in a gas station parking lot. So it's a trailer that can be moved around, but it's stayed in that same location for years now. 
Uh, we don't move it for that. We do events. We have other ways that we do events as well, but we created a space for the community to come to. Um, there's not very many shops like this in Orlando, just because of permittings and rules and regulations and all that. We had to find all the, the legal loopholes and ways to do it in order to get our place to be legit and able to stay up, uh, set up and stay there. Um, but this is our food trailer. We serve uh, shaved ice out of it. We've done drinks and hot chocolate and some different things like that, but primarily it's all about shaved ice. Now it looks like this today, which Obviously, I'm very partial, but I like the branding. I like the look. I, we try to get something a little bit more classy, uh, a little bit more retro look. Uh, what it looked like when we bought it, though, is, is this. It was uh, very different. This open for us. It was a Hello Kitty themed uh, trailer, which, hey, to a lot of people, that's cute. And I and I get it. It's, uh, it's not bad, but I remember telling my wife, there's no way that I can go and uh, set up a business like this and me go sit in there all day long. I'm afraid people are thinking I'm trying to steal kids or something like that. So we rebranded it and we changed it. And that was actually a really important component of what we're doing um, because it helped us really establish um, establish a look, establish a feel. And a lot of people come to our shop because of the way that it looks. Now, how we got started, a little bit of our backstory there. Even though we're in Florida, which is very hot um, and you know the number one tourist destination in the world, there's not a lot of shaved ice here. There's still not a lot of shaved ice here. Um, I have some theories on that, but that's, that's for another topic. Uh, but we kind of looked around my, one day, my wife, we've only lived here for eight years now, but at the time we had lived in Arizona for 10 years. My wife and I grew up in Chicago. Um, we've been to Hawaii countless times and we've been around shaved ice and we see stands all over the place to sell shaved ice, but there was none that was here. So, uh, my wife went to Sam's club and bought like one of those, you know, snow cone machines. And we didn't like that because we're used to a certain taste and texture and feel. Um, and just the more we thought about it, we thought, you know what? Let's open a business. Let's open something for the kids was the initial initial thought. Let's make it, you know, a side hustle for us and something for the kids that they can go and they can work on and they can do. So we we did a bunch of research and I'll tell you a little bit more about that story as I went through and did this. Um, it was very, very, very difficult and painful for us to understand the shaved ice component and the food truck component of how we get started with it. Yeah, I understand business. I, you know, I understand the, the systems of business. I understand how to market a business. I understand how to get sales. I get all that stuff. But the other side of it, the actual like, well, how do I open a shaved ice stand? I had no idea what I was doing there. So it was very, uh, very painful, very uh, hard, literal sw blood, sweat and tears. I remember crying once in the county office saying like, please, you got to help me get this permit done um, so we can open up this thing and get going with it. And um, it was really, really hard. Um, but it was worthwhile. Uh, we opened, we put our own cash into it. Um, from day one, the business was profitable. I think in the first month we paid, uh, we made enough money to pay back everything that we put into it to buy all of our equipment and permits and, you know, supplies and all those different things like that. Um, it's been in that same location. Uh, we just ended our, we've been there for two and a half seasons in this one specific location we've been at. Uh, we easily make over six figures every year doing it. Um, as far as our sales, um, it's a great, awesome business that we love and we love being a part of. Um, and we really did it with the premise of we wanted to uh, serve happiness to our community. We wanted to teach our kids about business. Um, we wanted to have them be involved in the business as well, but also be an employee of the business so they can understand kind of both sides of that equation. Um, and then we want to hire uh, local teenagers specifically to give them good jobs and good opportunity. Um, and the cool part about all this is we built it so it's profitable without our day-to-day -day involvement. So I don't go and work in the shop. I have. I've done it countless times. I'm, I I don't have anything against doing that. It's just we wanted to have a business that we could hire people to go work in the day to day. I do a lot of the behind the scenes, the, the marketing side of it, the relationship side of it, uh, help with the inventory. There's a lot of different things that we do there. But ultimately, like, you know, that shop opens every day and closes every day without me having to go there and make sure it happens. We have a team that does that. We have systems that do that. And it's very profitable. So it's a great business. We, we love doing it. Um, and we'll do this for a very, very long time to come. Now, along the way, um, you know, as I said, as I kind of alluded to here, getting this figured out and opening it all up was kind of, it was a difficult process. It didn't, you know, it wasn't as smooth as I kind of hoped it would be. I remember sitting here back and thinking in the beginning of it, man, if we, there was just somebody who could just say, hey, here's everything you need to do. I would have gladly, um, gladly done that. I would have gladly hired and paid thousands of dollars, probably a lot of money uh, to somebody just walking through how to do it. But that wasn't there. Now, we had a lot of people who were very kind to us. We'd reach out to other shop owners. Um, I got on some of the Facebook groups, the ones that existed back then. There weren't like it is today. Um, and I, I did get answers. But it was like, you know, I guess the best way to put it is everybody would give me a piece of a puzzle. But I had to put together the puzzle. And I didn't even know what the end you know, product of what the puzzle should look like. So I didn't figure this all out as, as I went. And it was rough. So I promised myself, 
once we figure this out, I'm going to take a lot of my other skills and work that I've done. I'm going to create what we have here today, create a community, create programs, create resources, create trainings to walk people through how to make this work much easier and smoother than what I had to go through. So they don't have to experience the same pain that I did. So out of that was born uh, what was originally called the Sweet Profits Group. Now it's called the, the Food uh, food Truck Shop Marketing Group. Um, I have a program called Shaved Ice Academy, which is a paid program that will walk you through the A to Z of how to open, how to run, how to manage a shaved ice business. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit more about that later on. That goes really deep, really in depth of everything you need to do and how to open a shaved ice business. Um, we have other resources coming out soon. Um, next, uh, Early next year, I have a new program that will introduce that I think is going to revolutionize the way food truck marketing happens. Uh, a very inexpensive uh, solution for you guys as well. So I, I really kind of took that, and, and largely it was because of the pandemic. Uh, the pandemic, um, my industry died. I was working with live events and conferences all over the United States, and that stopped. And so I kind of had to reinvent myself. So I just Dove headfirst and all in on, on snowmos and ran that for the summer. And that went amazing. It kept growing and growing and growing. And then built all these other things I've been doing now for you know exactly a year now. We've been doing these other groups. Um, and it was all the purpose, again, of creating better resources and things that are out there for for, for us, for, for shaved ice businesses, for food truckers. Um, so a lot of cool things. But along the way of doing that, I guess I could boil it down to like five, and I have three up here, sorry, five main uh, core uh, ideas, secrets, you know, tips, keys, whatever you want to call it, uh, things that I learned along the way that I find if you have these five things kind of figured out, the business will really work out and run for you. So the meat of what we're going to do today is go through these five things and to kind of uh, give you specific actionable things that you can be doing. And I want to give you a whole lot to be thinking about. Again, uh, for those of you just kind of uh, tuning in or if you're watching in the replay, uh, leave in the comments. Let me know uh, where you're from. Uh, what type of business that you, you have. Uh, if this is the first time you've heard one of my trainings or you've been around for a bunch of those before, I would love to hear that also. Um, then if you have questions as we go through, feel free to ask questions, put in the comments. Uh, I'll see them here live, do my best to answer them live as I can. Uh, if not, if I see it later on or if you're watching the replay, I'll go through and answer as many of those I can later on. Or feel free to direct message me or ask in the group if you have questions as well. All right. So take a quick drink. I was doing a class last night. In the middle of it, I totally lost my voice, and I'm hoping that doesn't happen today. So let's dive in here into the five secrets. I'm going to show you a shortcut on how to make this all faster and easier for you, and then we'll get through uh, a bunch of the questions if, if any of those come up uh, during our time here today. So secret number one, when you have your ducks in a row, your stress is minimal, okay? Here's what I mean by that. Um, if you have everything organized well with your business, specifically, let's start with like where are you going? So if you have these different things in place, you're going to feel a lot better about it. So where are you going with your business? You know, what's your vision? What's your direction? Why are you doing this to begin with? Have you sat down and, and done a written plan? I have a, a written plan effect. Trying to move here, I have an example of a written plan um, that we fill out with uh, a lot of the, the members of the group that will walk you through specifically. Um, this is what I'm doing with my business. This is the big picture. This is what last year happened. This is what I want to happen this year. You have a direction of that. If you do, if you have a vision, you're immediately going to have some stress taken off of you because every decision you make is filtered through that. This is the direction I want to go into my business. Okay. Next thing, do you have a legit, legitimate business? So are you legally compliant with everything? Don't cut corners on this. It drives me crazy how many businesses I see get in trouble because they cut corners somewhere along the way. So make sure you have the necessary uh, local and state permits, uh, whatever, whatever your area requires, make sure you have that put into place. Have a bank account specific for your business. Don't run this all through your personal checking account. Have it separated. Have a business page for social media and a business page is all other things. And I'll walk you through a lot of this with Academy, but have a legitimate business. I think of 11 point checklist of different things you need to walk through to make sure that your business is legitimate. It's legal. It's compliant. Make sure you have that because then you're not, one, it's it's meant to run smoother once you have those things, but then you're not always worrying like, what if I get caught or what if I do something wrong or what happens when taxes are due or how do I actually run payroll because I didn't set that up right? I'll just pay them out of the, the cash register every day. Don't necessarily have that, guys. Have it legitimately uh, compliant and legally compliant to make sure that your business is, uh, is running smooth for you there. Be organized as you can. And I have two separate ways of doing this. Give me a quick second to show you something here. I have... A handy dandy, this is so not sexy, but it's really important. A big accordion file. You see, this is kind of fat. Um, I actually could probably clean this out, but from day one of, of starting our business, I took, I bought an accordion file. I think this cost me whole eight dollars or some of that on, on Amazon. And I have in here files like Florida uh, Department of Agriculture, because that's what to be permitted through. A file for the Department of Department of Revenue, 
uh, file for insurance, file for menu ideas, our trailer registration, our shavers, our vendor info, all these different things are listed in here. So have something physically to be organized because you're going to get paper. So make sure that you have a place to put that. But then digitally be organized as well. I prefer using Google uh, Google Drive. I set up a very specific format how everything's in Google Drive, and I document everything inside of my business. So, uh, for example, we recently changed our hours because we're in the, the cooler season, so we're open less hours. But I have, I think, five different places I need to update hours, and I can't ever remember what they are. So I have a, uh, a file inside of uh, our Google Drive account that says go here, here, and here, and here. Here's the login and password. Here's where you need to change the hours. So that way, when it's time to change hours, I do that. So we do this to all the different systems in our business. And I'll walk you through an academy about how to really how to get that set up. And so digitally, everything's set up. And then the last thing's going to help you, again, this is when your ducks are in a row, your stress is minimal. The last thing's going to help you out is systems. And a couple of different systems to have. First and foremost is checklists inside of your business. Now, we actually stole this from our from uh, from parenting, if you will. All right. we have. I showed you my picture a few minutes ago. We have five kids. Um, I have... A business I do. My wife has business. What she does. Uh, kids are working. They have sports. They have things going on. We're active in our, our local community, our church community. We have a lot of different things we're involved in. So you can imagine stuff's all over the place. And so uh, a while back, we realized that just chores weren't getting done with our kids, you know, or even just routines in the morning weren't taking care of. Four of my kids are boys. So uh, sometimes things like brushing your teeth and showering is, a, is more of a fight than it needs to be, I guess. So what we sat down with the kids is we made a checklist. Hey, every day do this. And if you do these things every day, then you'll get a certain reward out of it. We're paying them kind of like a, a salary out of doing it, like actually more of a commission type thing out of doing it. Uh, but if they did there every single day, their things and there's basic stuff they should be doing anyways, they'd be paid for doing that. And once we had that checklist into place, guess what? Everybody's teeth were brushed, beds were made, houses looking a lot better, things were running smoother. And when we fall off that system, things are running rougher. Well, it's the same idea we do in our business as well. Uh, when our employee comes in later today to open up the shop, they're going to walk through a specific checklist of these are the things they need to do. The employee's been there and worked with us for months, but they know it's due, but they'll still walk through a checklist and check off every day, put the shaver here, uh, put the flag up over here, set the cash register like this, um, wipe off these different things, drain this thing, whatever it is that to walk through, a very specific checklist for them to do. Same with closing, same when it's downtime, same with how to handle money, same with the cleaning checklist, same with if you have an issue with a customer, have checklists and things like that in your business. And I give you a lot of templates for that in Academy. Um, same with your processes. You know, I mentioned a couple of minutes ago about uh, changing the hours. What about how do you run payroll, for example? Um, how do you do your posts on social media? Uh, how do you open up a relationship with or start a relationship with a local influencer or another uh, local business? Have processes and procedures for that and document everything. If you do those different steps here, guys, your stress is going to be so much lower than it is right now. I don't know if it is right now, but it's going to be so much lower than it could be um, because you're organizing your ducks in a row. So that is, honestly, that might be the biggest secret of all. If you just have these things figured out and set up and into place for you, everything runs smoother in your business because you're organized and you're on the right page. So that's secret number one. Secret number two, to uh, you have a brand and a menu that's irresistible. So let's talk about this for a second here. It's kind of three separate keys or areas that we're going to look at here uh, on what I mean by having things that are, are irresistible. So First key is what are you going to serve? What is your product that you're going to serve? We're a shaved ice, but past that, what type of shaved ice do we want to have? I didn't want to do just the regular, you know, strawberry, blue raspberry, cherry, all that. We do all that. That's good. And that's certainly, we sell a ton of that, but we wanted to be a bit gourmet as well. So I have other flavors like a caramel apple pie. We have uh, one we, we just we did this year. We got from an idea from another shop that's a chocolate raspberry and blueberry waffles. We have Butterbeer because we're close to Universal Studios, and that's really big with Harry Potter fans. So we have more of a gourmet, a signature menu, we call it. So that's part of what we're going to serve. We got really clear on that and developed an irresistible menu for that. Um, in fact, let's dive in the menu, and I'll go through the rest of the keys from there. In order to kind of get an idea of what you want from your menu, keep testing, keep trying different things. We do shaved ice parties a couple times a year where we buy a bunch of different flavors from a bunch of different places. I have a couple right over here. Uh, and then we'll, we'll sample them. We'll test them. And we'll have friends and customers come over either to our house or to the shop. And we'll have them test different things. You know, we keep evolving the menu so that it's something that uh, we know people want and they like and they enjoy because it's unique. It stands out. It's irresistible at a certain point. Now we have people drive for you know hour, hour and a half away to get our butter beer because it's it's unique. You can't get it anywhere else too. Um, and it's really good. And the reason why it's really good is because we tried it. I don't know how many different iterations of that. We kept testing it until ultimately we figured out this is what tastes the best. Same with a lot of our other flavors. So do that with your menu, whether it's shaved ice or whatever product it is, figure out how you're going to make it irresistible. 
Okay, the second thing, the second key to this of having some irresistible is what type of shop are you going to have as well? So again, I showed you have a food trailer. Uh, we we changed our shop from the way it looked to something else. But I think the best way you can do this, and for all these, by the way, the probably the best thing you can do is go on like Pinterest, for example, or even just Google or look in the media section of the Facebook group and look for examples of other shaved ice businesses. So here's a couple of examples that when we were getting started, this is what we started looking at. We like these brands and a couple others, but these brands specifically on the left is We Ice. I believe they're in Utah and Washington. In the middle is Lilo's. They are in Kansas City. And then Blue Monkey, if I remember correctly, they are in um, uh, Nashville. So we really love the way their brand and their menu and their product looked. So as we were developing our own, we kept looking at like, what are some examples of they're getting from there? And we pulled some examples from that. We made it our own. We emulated it, but we definitely made it our own. So then that way we, we made something that we're really proud of as far as our shop. So how do you want your shop to look? How are you going to set up your shop? What's going to make people as they're driving by stop and check out your shop? Or if you're at an event, they go to your food trailer or your food truck instead of somebody else's. How are you going to make that stand out? And that's one of the things I actually love about um, – uh, the food truck uh, businesses, especially, is the character and the flair that you see. Some of these branding, some are horrible and tacky, but a lot of them are just are are gorgeous or they're creative or they're fun. So be fun, be whatever type of brand that you want to be, and make sure your shop represents that and looks like that as well. And then with that is kind of your your logo and your look. How do you want your your you know what do you want your look and your feel about your business to be? Again, a couple examples, same of the other ones before, but I'll add in here uh, Matsumoto's, which is out of. Um, uh, out of Hawaii, they're kind of like one of the OG shops uh, out of Oahu. Uh, we looked a lot of their menu and sorry, their branding and some of what they're doing. We try to think, okay, what's working for them? How do we make something to work for us? That's how we developed our, our, our past that is how we, you know, we started looking at our snowmobiles menu. This is what our logo is today. Um, there was a restaurant in Chicago that isn't there anymore. Uh, but we're, when my wife and I grew up, we used to go to that restaurant and it was more of like a, a retro type diner feel. So as we're putting together a menu, we wanted some of that as well. So we put together something that we felt was a little bit more retro feel. And long story short, that's how Snowmobiles was born. The evolution was a little ugly. We had um, some different versions and iterations and things that we tried. Um, and by the way, we did all this ourselves. My daughter designed the, the, the logo. Um, my wife and I had our input. Uh, but again, we just kept pulling ideas or thoughts of like, well, I like this, I like this, I like this. And so we kept uh, trying different things uh, until ultimately we came up with what was the best. So test it and try it. But you want something that's going to be irresistible, uh, something that people are driving by like, oh, I got to stop and try that. Or they see it online. I got to stop and figure out what that is. You know, we're, you're fighting for attention more than anything everywhere you go right now. So what are you going to do that's going to get people to stop and pay attention to the thing that you have? Make sure that your, your menu, your shop, your logo, your look of your business, your brand, that those are things that are irresistible. So that is secret number two. Any questions or thoughts or comments on that, then please, please feel free to put in the comments. I see a couple of you are, are tuning in, saying hi to one another. Welcome. Thank you for doing that. Um, uh, but if you have any other comments and things, feel free, or questions or things, feel free to leave in the comments there. All right. Moving on to secret number three. <clears throat> if you pick the wrong location, you're going to fail. Um, and I'll add to that, if you pick the wrong events and you keep going to them, you're going to fail. So... Even if you have everything figured out, your your branding is on point and your um, your, your ducks in the row, so your stress is minimal and all that, you still can fail if you're in the wrong spot. So let me tell you a little bit about, about what happened to the evolution of us. So we started the shop. We started Snowmos. We had a trailer. We're going around doing a bunch of events. But ultimately, the goal was let's find a location that we stay at. We kept calling it a semi-permanent location. And it was tough to find. Um, after a while, a friend of mine, um, in, in Claremont, which is a city right now, uh, he had a business there. He's like, Hey, listen, uh, we're talking one day. He's like the 4th of July fireworks are just down the street, uh, on the 4th of July, um, which was coming up. He's like, why don't you go park the trailer in my parking lot? And, uh, we'll just kind of see what happens. This is kind of the agreement he and I had. So I went and set up our trailer there. Here's a picture of it. And we just plopped up and we set up shop and, uh, opened up. First we did the 4th of July for their festival, which was right down the street. And then we're really busy for that. Uh, but then we stayed there for about a week to 10 days and we just, we were busy. We just, people just showed up. This was no marketing, um, nothing online. We didn't post a single thing. Um, we just showed up one day and we started getting a ton of business and people coming and stopping by because of the location, because where it was at. Unfortunately, we couldn't stay there. The city didn't allow that. They didn't permit that. They were on us so fast saying we couldn't be there. They were kind and we worked with them on things and we tried to get, you know work out a deal with them. But ultimately this specific city and the location it was a long story short, it was a no fly zone. We could not stay there and stay in that location. 
Okay. So we moved on from there. Now we had found another location um, down in, a, in a, uh, another city called Gotha, which is actually a lot closer to home for me. And we set up in this. This was outside of a dance and karate studio. And there was like a, a big kids area, a huge parking lot, and this field next to it on a semi busy street. So we set up shop there and we stayed there for a couple of weeks. Unfortunately, though, it was slow. Um, this was probably the busiest time, this picture we have of it, where we had the most people out there, but we just didn't have a lot of people stopped and tried out our shop there. Um, in fact, in a, in a couple of hours at our shop in Claremont is what we'd make in like days here in this shop down in, in Gotha in the other city. So it just wasn't working. And I just kept looking at this thing and like, okay, we got to figure out a way to get back up to Claremont, the other suburb the, the where we were before. Maybe not the same location because legally we couldn't be there but somewhere else close to it. So we went out and we pounded the pavement. And, I, and if you've watched any of our trainings about finding a new location or in, in Shaved Ice Academy, I have a whole training on how to do it. I have a specific method I went through and I found uh, ultimately a location where we could be at. So I searched on down, or I went on down, uh, I went up there and ultimately we got set up in this location that we're at today. We've been here for two and a half years. It's worked great for us. It's our home. That's where our location will be for the foreseeable future. Um, and we started making, you know, great revenue. In fact, better than when we were down the street at my friend's location, we did the best we'd ever had in this specific spot and location. So even though the second location, it was a lot closer to home for me, um, and it looked good and it had a lot of, a lot of the things that we thought would work out well, it wasn't a good location. We had to find this third location, which is where we stayed at. So that's a long story short of saying finding that right location is going to be key to your business. It's, you know, my wife's in real estate. It's, you know, the old saying, location, location, location. That's, that's you know, really what makes a property a good look for property or not is the location of it. So once you have that, if you're trying to stay in the wrong spot, if you have the, if you're trying to stay in one spot, sorry, if you pick the right one, you're great. You're in good shape. Things are going to run well. If you pick the wrong one, you're going to have a really hard time being successful there. Um, if you want some more training on that, we have some training, uh, some other resources available for you to walk through and hide and find the right location. But that's another key. Okay, two more keys, guys, or two more secrets, whatever you want to call them, and I'll show you a shortcut and then answer any questions or things you have coming up. All right, this next one is really around marketing, and having a base of fans is always better than finding new customers, and in order to do that, you really need to have a predictable way to build your fan base, okay? So let's dive into this a little bit. Now, as you know, so much of this group is around marketing. And a lot of the training videos and things that we put in here, a lot of the resources I do, if you follow me on Instagram, a lot of what I do in there is to try to help you understand the marketing side of things. <clears throat> so having kind of a scientific way or, or, or right way of doing it will, will you know, helps you. It's going to work out a lot better for you in the long run. So what I want you to think about doing, and this is a little bit of a semantics, a little bit of a mind shift, but if you think in this direction, I think it'll be better for you. So don't just think about, I need to get customers. Think about, I want to create fans, or we call them guests. We have guests come to our location, the guests come to our shop. Um, we're close to Disney World. Disney World, they don't have any customers there. They have guests. If you're there, they're, they're staff members who aren't even called staff members. They're called cast members. But their staff will call you a guest. You're considered a guest at their place. And so I always looked at, well, when they come to my location, I want them to feel like a guest. And if they're following us online or some of our lists, I want them to be a fan and not just a customer. It makes it a little bit more personal for us. These are some of our different fans that we have. Now, there's two different uh, sides of this that we're going to look at. The first is social media and the second is customers list. So the science is social media. You need to have a presence on what I call the big three of social medias, Google, Facebook, Instagram. Those are the three by far most important areas you need to have a presence on. You need to have the right presence on them in different ways. Google through Google My Business, Instagram through your, your page. Uh, Facebook, you need to have a business page, not just a personal page. And there's certain ways of running these pages in order to make you more successful and attract more fans and more guests. So you constantly need to do a certain kind of formula here, posting X amount of uh, posts on Instagram and Facebook or reels, which are crazy hot right now. Uh, blows my mind the reach you can have on a reel or doing certain amount of lives per week or every day doing a certain amount of stories on both Instagram and Facebook. You need to get in front of you do these things. But both the social media platforms themselves and your customers, they're going to appreciate consistency more than splashes. Splashes meaning I show up today, you don't hear from me for a while. Then I'll show up tomorrow or I'll show up in three days and then I disappear again. Or all of a sudden I'm going to give you five posts at once because it's really important and then you're never going to hear from me for a couple of weeks. And then I'm back again. Instead, I'd rather have you do a post today, a post tomorrow, a post the next day, a post the next day and have that consistency because that's what both the algorithms like 
but your your fans, your followers, your guests, that's what they uh, value more as well, some consistency. So how to do that's really important and figure out the best way to do that's important. And then running ads. I won't dive too much in ads right here, but it's it's uh, it's worth your while to run some ads if you do them the right way uh, to help generate some more business uh, or some more traffic to your business. And then the other side of this is what I call lists. So an email list. You guys are all on thousands of email lists probably all over the place. And you probably think email isn't as effective. And maybe it's not as effective as it used to be. Um, but every time we send out an email, we can track, um, we get hundreds of dollars of sales from it. Um, past that, the one I like even more than that is text message list. Now, you can only use a text message uh, maybe once or twice a week at the most to your, to your customers. They just don't want to get bombarded with text messages. But that is the best way I know to within minutes get people show up, new people show up to my uh, shop if I send out the right text message with the right offer in there. Uh, we'll send that out and within 15 minutes, we'll have people walking up with their phone in hand saying, hey, I want the whatever thing you just offered there. Um, so that's good. So building lists on that, building direct message and lists on your social media, those are all powerful things that you need to do as well. And as you do that, then you can keep communicating with people, stay in touch with them appropriately and keep building these raving fans. Again, going back to the initial concept here is to have uh, have a fan base, uh, base of fans versus always finding new customers. This is kind of the science of the way of how to do that is to the right way, stay in front of people and to uh, to build a relationship with them. And that really kind of ties in here. I'll segue quickly into secret number five, which is to connect it with your community. Now, this is part marketing and part being a good community player. Connecting with your community specifically, I mean, uh, being real and creating uh, relationships. So being real, um, let's just look at it from a numbers point of view. Posts that where you put your face on it uh, or your staff members' faces on it or, you know, your team, um, those posts often will work better than showing your product all the time. That's because with our size of business, and I think even where kind of where we're at as a society um, and coming through the pandemic and where everybody's looking at just where we're at today, people want to connect further. And I know many people I talk to, they would much rather support a small business, a mom and pop shop versus the big major business. And if you're running a food truck and you're listening to some of my training, you're a small business. You're you're a mom and pop shop. You might even have a couple different uh, shops or trucks and locations, but you're still a mom and pop shop. So let people see that. Um, there's a bunch that I follow personally on, on Instagram that are shaved ice businesses. And the ones that I like best, the ones where they're showing themselves, they're talking about what's going on. Because as you do that, you're creating a relationship with your your uh, your fans, with your your guests, with your customers. Um, people get to know you. They like you. They support you, and they will buy from you. Or they'll come back to you, or they'll refer you to other people. It's not you know a secret here in business. It's just kind of the way it works. Is if you build a good relationship, and that is an advantage that you have because you have a small business. Is they expect that from you. You know, think about it. If I'm watching an ad or I see an ad show up for. Um, I don't know, for Walmart and the CEO of Walmart's on there saying, I really appreciate your business. Thank you for coming to my shop. I'm like, who cares? You don't care. So what? I'm one of, you know, however many hundreds of thousands of customers that bought from Walmart today. If I don't show up, it's no big deal. But if a small business owner shows up and says, you know what? Thank you for coming out to our shop. Um, last week we did a thing and thank you for everybody who came to that. It really made a difference or whatever it is that you have going on, people really connect with that because they're like, yeah, I really did help that individual shop, but I also got something great from them. At Shaved Ice, that butterbeer I tried, oh, that was so good, and I know I can't get it from anywhere else, and so you're building a good relationship. So be real, be authentic, and connect with your customers, with your community, with your fans. And then that also tie you into building uh, relationships, but I want to talk about local relationships for a second as well. Those are specifically uh, relationships with other uh, other businesses, uh, influencers, or uh, schools, or shops, or whatever it is around you. So spend time building those relationships as well. This helps from a marketing point of view and just from a relationship building point of view and working together point of view. Um, we have a ton of businesses out there that they hand out free shaved ice cards for Snowmost to all of their customers as well. Um, I have other trains in this also, but they'll go through and every time they see their customers, they give them on us a free shaved ice card to come try out our shop. It's great for them because their customer appreciates getting something for free. And it's great for us because we get a new cu potential customer showing up. So form relationships with them or with influencers. Um, almost every city, uh, both big or small, has people who are going around and they have Instagram accounts and they're taking pictures of their food and they're rating what they liked and didn't like from local shops. So invite a bunch of them to come out to your shop, try your stuff, and then promote them through your social media channels as well. And they'll promote you also. So build relationships there. 
with schools. Schools are a great way to get connected to as well. My kids come home with their report cards. A lot of times they have a little coupon from a local shop saying, hey, they get a, a free such and such because they got good grades or because they run the dean's list or whatever. Or once the school year begins, a lot of times you get a packet from, a, uh, from the school of a bunch of local businesses, coupons and special days, um, things that are coming up. Or you might have like a, a community sponsored like PTA day. So Everybody comes to our shop today. If they say they're from this school, we'll pay a percentage of those sales back to the school. So it's a fundraiser type thing. Do those types of things. But the only way you can do that stuff, guys, is if you form real relationships. Go on out. Go to the school. Be active in the school. Find out who's in charge of it. There's somebody there making a decision on what shops that they will promote. Now, they don't put it in those terms, but they're looking at, hey, how can we help the school and benefit the students better and raise funds for the school? Well, if you can partner with that, now you have a new flow of students and customers and families always coming to your shop because they heard about it from the school. So go ahead and do that. Work on building relationships. And I could talk about this for hours because this is a lot of what my uh, background has been is in partnerships like this. But go out and build relationships like this, guys, because this is a way that's going to really help you connect um, with the local, not only with the community, but help you develop uh, more of these fans and customers that we're talking about. So that is secret number five, connect with the community. Let's just review these real, real fast. Um, Tip number one, when your ducks are in a row, your stress is, is minimal. Number two, uh, if you have a brand, you need to have a brand and menu that's irresistible. Number three, if you pick at the wrong location, you are going to fail. And number four, have a business, having a base of fans is better than always having to find new customers. Now, let me talk about kind of the shortcut through all this. If you'll give me a couple minutes to do this, I think this is going to benefit a lot of you. It has dozens of people already. Um, but as I mentioned, I have a program that I created called uh, Shaved Ice Academy, and I'm putting the finishing touches on the the 2022 edition of this. So what Shaved Ice Academy is, and again, this is specific for a Shaved Ice business, is the walking you through how to open, how to run, how to manage, and how to grow a Shaved Ice, Shave Ice, uh, Snowball, uh, whatever you call it, all the different words for Shaved Ice. We, we do post that sometimes asking questions. It's funny how people have different opinions on that. But ultimately, a stand, a shop, a trailer, a brick and mortar, a walk-up window, uh, we've worked with all the different ones. Uh, maybe you have an existing business like a hot dog shop or cart and you want to add it on to them or something like that. Um, we worked with a business a while back. They had a campground. Uh, they had a successful restaurant in. They want to add shaved ice. So I've worked with them. So whatever, whoever you're for, this, uh, whatever type of uh, shop you want to have, this will work. This is what I wish we had when we got started. This is the exact framework, systems, processes to successfully, as I said, open this business and not just open it, but turn it into a six figure a year business. This is the birth out of the countless hours of research my wife and I did for this, talking with literally hundreds of different shaved ice business owners by now, um, our own tried and true experiences of, of running our shop for three years now, uh, almost four years actually, um, and then also just taking all of our background experience, putting it all together in a program. Uh, this will really benefit most if you are in the process of opening a shop or if you have one already and you're looking at kind of taking it to the next uh, level. Now, I've offered this this different times throughout the year, uh, but the next little bit, we're going to offer it because this is the best time to do it because you have time now to focus on your business. There's no shaved ice shops in the United States right now that are busier than when they're in the summer. If they are, something weird's going on. And I would love to talk to you to find out why, uh, but ultimately now is the time for you to work on your business because you're not working in your business as much if you understand kind of the distinction there. I also had the new 2022 edition uh, available and new pricing that you're really going to like that's going to show up on that. It's a little bit different than the in the previous versions, but I think it'll make sense for you guys as well. So ultimately what you're going to get with this guys is, is peace of mind um, of knowing like, okay, these are the tried and true strep steps that if I go through them, I can open my shop. I can grow my shop. I can have the right employees. I can have the right processes and checklists. I will market the right way. And my business will run and grow and thrive and will generate revenue and income for, for me, for my family, for whatever it is that you're trying to do. This is really going to help you here. Um, some of the more specific uh, nuts and bolts of it, uh, the way it's delivered, it's an online training portal. You'll log in, you have 40 plus training videos that are in there, worksheets that you can download, some like this that you can print out, some are calculators and spreadsheets and things you want you can put in there, uh, checklists that are both loaded with some information about you know some ideas you might want to have for opening, for example, uh, but templates is that also. So you can take the checklist um, and then you can you know take our template of it, put in your specific uh, items in there and ready for your business uh, templates. I like that as well. Like we give out free shaved ice cards or uh, frequent buyer cards that's included in this also. Um, and really a lot of the specifics uh, or a lot of the, the different things you could be using as ways to help um, promote your business and get more customers through these different templates. That's included in this also uh, lists specifically 
Um, you know, the number one, one of the number one questions I get is, well, what, what flavor should I buy? What concentrate should I buy? And I have a very different philosophy on how I do that. I don't just buy from one. I buy from a bunch and I will show you how that works and what that means. But then also buy flavor. Here's what I find is the best brand. Uh, what supplies do I need? You know, food supplies, supplies, excuse me. What do I need for my kitchen? What shop supplies do I need? What about technology? We have preferred partners. So really there's no guesswork in like, well, where do I go to buy this thing? I have it all listed out for you in a spreadsheet that you can go in. And if you have questions on it, you can you have ways to get in touch with me as well. Uh, speaking of that with support, unlimited digital support. So you can um, direct message me, text message me. Um, I guess really direct message the best way or email. Uh, I get back to that very quickly. And I'm constantly adding and upgrading and putting more and more in this program. So if somebody, if I get the same question a couple of times, I will then create a new video and I'll put it into here so that people can... Um, Go ahead and they can answer that and they can have the uh, whatever they need to uh, to have those resources later for the people to come later on. Um, I use the saying Disney World would never be completed because that is something from um, uh, from Walt Disney World. He said Disney World would never be done or something along those lines. So the investment and really getting going with this. Now, in the past, uh, the beginning of last year and for a lot of uh, the middle of last year, I sold this between seven ninety seven and nine ninety seven. Now, as I said, this is a bit different version. This is the 2020 edition than what was uh, been there. So this one's only $397, but I'm only going to do it for the next three people for today um, because part of the onboarding process is I want to walk you through and hold your hand and um, you know spend some one-on-one -on -one time with you. We'll get on some calls if we need to. So that's why I'm only going to do a couple people right now at the $397 price point. Um, if you're interested, there's the link. Um, I'll post it in here in a second as, as I'm able to do it. Um, but just uh, sweet-profits.com slash academy 2022. And again, uh, that pricing is just for a couple of people because I want to I want to get you started. I want to get you uh, involved in the program, uh, but I can only take on a certain amount of people at once because um, kind of a busy guy. I got a lot of different things that are going on. Um, bonuses that are included as well. As I mentioned, a private one-on-one -on -one call. Um, that's where we'll jump on the phone and talk about your unique specific situation. And I find that everybody's situation is a little bit different. So, you know, what works best now? What should you, um, uh, what should you be using in your business today? Uh, how will this, you know, work best for you? Whatever it might be, we'll talk about your specific situation. I just put in the comments, the link for this, if you want to check out some more info, um, this kind of the price, you get that now, the meme folder, what that is, is, uh, this is one of my favorite things I'm working on right now. As I mentioned, I'm working on, uh, a new program. It's a platform that will really revolutionize marketing in the food truck world. Um, but included in that, I have a folder. Uh, do I have a page open to that actually? Of a bunch of different memes that we, uh, I don't, sorry guys, um, that you can use. So uh, like the, you know, how it started, how it's going meme or different pictures of stuff. We're posting more on our Stomos page. If you want to check out some more there. Uh, I have some other things, but you get a folder. It's about a dozen different memes uh, that you can use in your business. So these are things that you can change a little bit and you can, uh, you know, put your wording or however you want, caption you want to say and post it to your social media so you don't have to worry about uh, social media and things that you want to create there. Um, and that's it. Again, this is for the first three people. So if you're interested in that, sweet-profits.com slash academy 2022, they'll take you straight to a page, a little bit more information. You can get set up there. If you get started with it, um, the first couple people that started with it, I will um, either today or tomorrow, I will schedule schedule your call. I'll reach out to you, schedule your call. So we can do that. Uh, if you want to do it before Christmas, I have time available. If you want to do it after that, we can do that as well. Um, but I really want to kind of get you started and get you going and, and get your business off and running. Um, if you, by the way, guys, if you have any specific questions, feel free to put them in. I'll, I'll address those here in a second. Um, but as I mentioned, this is the program that really is designed to, to take the guesswork. You know, I think back to when we got started um, and I see I realized my circumstance wasn't weird or different from what most people are, are going through. A lot of business owners I talk with, um, or they reach out to me, they have the same questions I had back then. And so uh, this is really a way to quickly answer all those different questions and things. If you're like, ah, I'm not sure how I want to do this. This is the way to answer all those different pieces at once. The investment is minimal for 397. That might be a day's worth of sales for you. So it's a minimal uh, investment for you. Um, and ultimately the return on that will be, you know, 50 fold or if not bigger than that, uh, on that return. So listen, guys, that's all I have for you today. Then, um, if you're interested to get started, sweet-profits.com slash Academy 2022, uh, leave a comment, send me a message as well. Was the meat and what we talked about today, was that beneficial for you? Was that helpful? Uh, is there other things you'd like some more support on? Please reach out, let me know all that. And I'd appreciate, uh, I'd be happy to put together some more training and support you and help you guys out. So with that, enjoy your day. Have a good one. And uh, we'll talk again soon. See you later.